Guys, understanding time is the missing ingredient that most of you do not consider. Now, I'm not talking about session times. I'm not talking about when's the best time of day to trade. I'm talking about understanding the closes of price across time frames is one of the key things that has helped me to rise above all of the other noise in the trading space. And so I'm going to explain this as fast as I can and hopefully the most simple way possible. So I hope that you enjoy. Let's break this down. Let's just say we're around about here in price. We're seeing that price is going down. So we're going to expect that it's going to continue going down. Now, my last few videos, I've been talking extensively about direction. So I'm not going to focus so much on that. I'm just going to give you an insight uh, as to how time interacts with direction, how it interacts with levels, how it interacts with entries. So as we are moving down, then when we run into something like we see here where price is moving up, most beginner traders are going to be looking at this as a reversal or the beginning of a reversal. Now, as I explained in the last video, just by eyeballing it, as you get more experience, you can look at this and say, OK, yes, it may be beginning to turn around, but more than likely it's going to at least consolidate before it has a major shift, because that's what happens most of the time. But let's just imagine we didn't have any idea about that. Are there any other clues that we can establish that would help us to understand this? And the first step is by understanding higher time frame time. So the, the highs and lows specifically, looking at the weekly highs and lows, looking at the monthly highs and lows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out this indicator. So in case you don't have it, if you just type in multi to the indicator, the search bar, you can just see it's an integrated one into TradingView, multi time period charts. This is the one. And then these boxes right here, these are my settings. I uncheck auto time frame. I just have one week set and then I just make them hollow here so it doesn't cloud my chart up with nonsense. And each one of these boxes is a week. As we were moving through, let's just say that you originally wanted to sell here and it stopped you out here. Let's go figure out what most people would do. So after you've taken this loss, you look at price, you reverse it. You're like, oh, wow, look, the speed here is really, really good. Maybe I was on the wrong side. And so what you may start doing is you may then start as we start pulling back, looking at this as a potential buy opportunity. Maybe you're looking at this little doji here as a potential buy signal. Of course, this is just an illustrative example. And then you'll go down and you'll be like, ah, OK, now you took two losses instead of taking one loss. Now, that might seem like a small thing, but it's actually a huge difference. It can be the difference between break even and winning or break even even in losing. But that's not the main point of what I'm trying to get across here. What can we learn from this entire area here? Throughout this whole week, yes, it looks like we were going to move up, but what ended up happening is that week closed all the way down here and it did so very aggressively. There's a classic trap that will get people caught on the upside up here. Now, if we compare that to, let's say this week over here, what's the key difference? Well, up until this point, we were going down. Yes, we started consolidating, but here is the first time where we actually closed above a previous weekly high. So let's imagine we didn't have this. This will help you to understand this more. If we were going down all of this, time and then we start peaking above the structural areas over here any natural person is going to say this could be maybe a potential break of structure someone might say oh well this could be potentially the beginning of a change of direction and it's not that that is wrong it's just not as effective as what i'm going to show you here because as soon as you put this on and we understand that the weekly close just as the monthly close is extremely powerful we will see that here we open the week we go up, but then we close back down below this level here. So if we look at this weekly area as a weekly high, then the same thing happens over here. We look like we're breaking above, but then the week actually closes down here. And so what I'm trying to get across is that a good break of structure comes from a good close on the time frame related to it. So that is a bit of a mouthful. So let's break that down. So for a weekly high or a weekly low, what we really want is a weekly close beyond that level. And then the same is true for the monthly. We've got a monthly high low. We want a monthly close. One of the damaging things about being on the lower time frame is you will see confirmation of things that just haven't happened yet. If we look at these weeks here and then we go to the actual weekly chart, you will see this. It was this week right here and then this week right here. This throughout that week looked like it was going up, but then look how it closed. Same thing's true over here. And so understanding this is a really key thing just for, from a directional standpoint first. So at this point in time, is there anything other that we could look at that may indicate that this is not going to change direction. Well, if we look at the monthly, so this box that I've just added is the monthly, what can we look at? Because we're dealing with the monthly, we're not looking, you know, hundreds of candles back. We're looking max two months, maybe three months in the past because each candle is an entire month, obviously. So there's no real value in looking just at this month. We want to look at how the last month, the last two months have happened, assuming that we're around here. 
So the first thing that jumps out to me here is if we just mark out this high. Okay, so you can see that we tried to close above that monthly high. We came down. We closed only a little bit below this previous monthly high, but that is significant because the monthly close is significant. That means on the higher time frame, this is going to all be a wick. All of this will be um, some kind of a wick. As we moved into the first two weeks of this month, we then held below that level. Yes, we, we peaked above it, but like I said, look at how we peaked above it. Did the week close above a weekly high? No, it didn't. It peaked above, came back down. As we move up into here, is it most likely that we're going to continue going up or going down? Well, it's actually more likely that we're going to go down because we're still playing out that monthly sequence. Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to fly down a million pips, but it means that we are more likely to go down. Then when we get that confirmation, as that week closes, then the next month is very nice, as you can see. But then what happens over here? Why is this month different? We come down here, we sweep the lows, and then where do we close in relationship to that? So the actual month closes here. So the month closes here, which I believe compared to the open, is just a little bit above. So it's a very small bullish candle. So if we imagine a weekly candle like this before we actually go to the weekly, then we had a little bullish candle like this. It'd probably be a bit smaller than that. And then we had a wick below here. Now, this is a key thing that you need to understand. There is a difference between the stop selling point and the start buying point. This is something that took me so long to really get into my head. But what I used to do is I used to look at something like this and be like, oh, okay, great. This means that it's time to start buying because I'm not selling anymore. And that's not how I approach things now. Now I have a stop selling point and I have a start buying point and they're separate. So in this particular example, my stop aggressively selling point would be around about here, but I would still be open to an extreme trade like this, but that's more discretionary. From a pure mechanical standpoint here would be exactly where I would stop selling. And then I would start buying actually a little bit later than this. My ideal start buying point wouldn't be until up here. From here to here, is basically a month in between these two. Now, of course, it's all relative depending on the time frame you use, but it just gives you an idea as to exactly what I mean by stop selling and start buying. But understanding time puts you in a really big advantage position because you stop running into a lot of the time situations like this, where you're peaking above and it doesn't quite meet the criteria or it looks like a change in direction, or you've got a level marked out and it looks like maybe it's going a little too deep or maybe you had this level as the one you were marking out, but then you see it going above and because we see levels, we always look to see patterns and stuff. Because we peak above, our brains are going, oh, okay, well, it must be going up now. But if you integrate the other things, if you integrate that idea of the close relationship with the time and having those higher time frames to frame what's going on, it can be absolutely game changing and it was for me it takes a little time to get used to but i will make some more videos on this if you're interested in it so let me know in the comments below uh hopefully you found this helpful in some way if you're interested in taking all of these skills to the next level then i would recommend checking out the links in the description box below where we go over strategy and all of the processes which are more important things like developing the edge how to back test the edge how to journal how to do self-therapy how to do self-review how to do ata these are the processes that i attribute to 99% of my progress, not just, oh, here's how you draw a line on a chart. There's a lot more to it than that. I know it's a lot more sexy just to talk about strategy, but it's about how all of these things work together. So anyway, that's enough talking from me. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care.